Uh, good day to you, everybody. My name's Thomas Keegan. It is uh, June the 28th, Thursday, and I have an interview here today with Adam Steele, candidate for U.S. Congress for the 7th Congressional District of Minnesota. And um, he is on the ballot, and, uh, and he's going to be asking for your votes here. Um, his competition is Lee Byberg, the Republican, who's I think being um, endorsed by like uh, Dick Morris and, 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 and it's, it's just um, just the typical Republicans and Democrats um, and Colin Peterson. And um, you just visit Colin Peterson's issue page and it's not a whole lot there, but um, just a blue dog Democrat. But what we who we have here today is Adam Steele, candidate for U.S. Congress. And um, you do have another choice in the 7th District uh, to send someone to the U.S. House of Representatives um, from the 7th Congressional District. And let's see what how, um, you know, he stands on some of the issues. Uh, uh, first, I, I see that you're a certified public accountant and, um, you know, you have a lot of certification, sir. Um, and uh, it, you have... Um, you know, you've uh, won some court cases too, or participated in that. So, it seems like um, uh, certified by the IRS as an enrolled agent in 1993. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's uh, a previous. I, I, I have to say, I I, uh, I did give up my enrolled agent status when I became a CPA, but uh, but I, I was an enrolled agent at one time. Okay, so you had the experience and then became a CPA, and uh, so we'll go through the issues and, and uh, you know, see what you would uh, champion and what kind of legislation that you would promote. Um, uh, so, sir, good to talk to you today, and um, so I understand you're on the Independence Party, or you're an independent, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely, uh, sir, uh, yes, uh, Independence uh, Party. Great, great, and um, you're the only person that is on the ballot that um, isn't a Republican or a Democrat. And uh, um, you know, Einstein created such simple uh, little um, uh, equations. You, you know, E equals M C square, and, and the theory of relativity. He also said, uh, ex you know, expecting d different results by doing the same thing is insanity. And uh, so right now, Congress's approval rating is, you know, about single digits. And um, uh, we do have other choices here. So w let's see where you'd stand on some of the issues. Um, now, being a CPA, I imagine you probably have some thoughts on the budget. Uh, is that true? Uh, well, yes, I, I do, but I, I want to, uh, if, if I could take uh, a moment sure. to, to give you an overview of the campaign okay. uh, here uh, and what we're really uh, addressing here. Uh, uh, firstly, I, I had some reluctance to run because, uh, frankly, I, I like Colin Peterson. I think he's uh, been a very good representative uh, for a very long time. Uh, and and he has uh, some very good ideas, and he also is, by the way, is a CPA, um, a good musician too. Um, but uh, the thing of it is that, that, that something arose uh, here in northern Minnesota that, that really requires uh, address, uh, and, and it requires address uh, federally, and, and, and that's the fact that we have a situation where U.S. constitutional rights are simply being trampled on uh, as uh, regards um, uh, a persons accused um, uh, of, of um, uh, offenses uh, here in um, uh, northern Minnesota. And this particularly affects uh, people who uh, are, are of limited means, so, you know, they, they can't afford their own attorneys, um, that sort of thing. And, and specifically, and, and as you, you'll see if I, you, you know, if you go to my, my uh, website, uh, uh, we have a situation here uh, which just sticks out. Now, let me give everyone the website. It's uh, steelscampsite.info, S-T-E-E-L-E-S, campsite, C-A-M-P-S-I-T-E, dot info. Um, and then, uh, so please continue, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes, uh, so anyway, this, this thing came to our attention, and it just sticks out. And it, it's, uh, you know, I hate to say it's a one-issue campaign, you know, because people, you know, sometimes don't like that. But really, this is so big that, that it's got to be addressed. Um, uh, we, we have an instance of, of a gentleman who in 2009 was plucked out of his home. He was uh, uh, deputies uh, who weren't summoned by any of, of, of anyone in the home um, where the man was living with his uh, fiance. Uh, he was plucked out of his home. He was uh, thrown in jail uh, on a, a charge that 
was framed. Uh, uh, the, the, the deputies charged him <coughs> with domestic uh, abuse, two counts of it, and the fiancé, you know, the alleged victim in, in, uh, there in the home, uh, the fiancé told officers uh, at the scene that no such thing had, had occurred. Um, and and uh, she reiterated that many times to, to authorities in, in the going, uh, you know, to people like the prosecutors and, and the public defender, everyone. Uh, and yet they continue to maintain these charges. Do uh, they have a record of that call? Uh, a, a record of, of what call? Or didn't they say they got a tip or something? That oh, well, uh, what it was was uh, the, the the reason they were there was because uh, the, the fiancé uh, and, and, and the person involved, whose name is, is Stephen Samuelson, uh, they were having a, a verbal argument, you know, a lover's quarrel, as, as you know, uh, as engaged people uh, sometimes uh, have, but it was it was nothing, you know, physical. It was just a a, a, a verbal, you know, um, uh, bickering. Um, and what happened was that the the uh, a relative, I believe it was a, a a cousin or a niece or something, of um, the the fiance, whose name, by the way, is is Jennifer Bardeen. Uh, happened to be uh, talking to uh, Jennifer on, on, on the phone and um, uh, became concerned and, and the, this, this relative of, of Jennifer's was uh, like, uh, she was down as I understand it in, in Aitken which is you know uh, a long ways from, from uh, where Mr. Samuelson lived. She was, you know, it was just something uh, uh, that she became concerned about from a telephone conversation uh, with uh, Jennifer and, and, and it was that person that initiated the call to deputies uh, and, and so okay so you know she sent uh, deputies uh, out to the home uh, of mr. Samuelson and and his fiance and uh, we have a record of, of uh, uh, radio calls uh, uh, you know uh, between the the uh, deputies and and their uh, dispatch. Uh, which indicate their attitude in going out there. Uh, uh, one of them uh, said on the, the radio uh, something to the effect that I, I think we can uh, grab him. Uh, in other words, uh, they went out there with, with the intent of making an arrest. Uh, when they got to the, the scene, uh, Ms. Bardeen uh, told them, no, they were just arguing. Uh, there, there wasn't anything physical there. And uh, yet they, they arrested Mr. Samuelson anyway. Uh, and uh, Ms. Bardeen has testified in court uh, uh, also that there was never any uh, abuse or assault. Uh, unfortunately, when Mr. Samuelson was eventually brought to trial uh, for, for violation of a no-contact order, uh, Ms. Bardeen was not allowed to tell the jury that there was never any uh, uh, offense uh, in the way of domestic Okay, so abuse. you're saying she was not allowed to tell the jury that. Right. She, 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 the, the, uh, prior to, it, 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 prior to her testimony, uh, the, the judge sent the jury away and called uh, up forward uh, uh, Ms. Bardeen and, and also the, the defense attorney, uh, Mr. Graham, and, and uh, gave them, the, he, he read them, you know, a list of things that they may not say uh, and, and things that, that she could not testify to. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the uh, examination of her uh, un under oath before the jury, what, 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 what actually came about was but she joke. was was she on the defensive? Could what did they could they tell she was on the defense side of it, or what did was she just in the audience and stuff? Oh like no no, uh, the, the the jury the, she was called as a witness for the defense. Yeah. Uh, so th so that was obvious, but but the thing of it is that 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 uh, when when she was on the stand, w what she was allowed to testify to. Uh, was was really a joke because she wasn't allowed to to say what actually happened and what was going on. I mean, she was she was uh, her her testimony was cut down to almost nothing because the judge 
you know, had told them, you know, if she testifies to this, well, you know, that, that could result in you know, a... That's a good, raise a good question. Should juries be allowed to know if there's evidence that's been withheld? Like, you could make a law, I guess a compromise law would be, they wouldn't even know what it is, but that they at least know that there was something, you know? Uh, and that would be a good thing because, you know, in his closing arguments, uh, when, when the jury was not allowed to hear the full testimony in his closing arguments, the defense attorney, you know, was allowed to touch on that, like, you know, he was allowed to say, you, you got to go back to the jury room and think about if there's something that you're not hearing, but he could not tell the jury that the judge had, had disallowed all of this testimony relating to the key issue of whether there was or was not ever a domestic assault. I mean, the fiancé was not allowed to tell the jury that there was no assault to begin with. Uh, now, I'm getting ahead of myself here because I, I should get back to the chronology. So he's plucked out of his home by the deputies, you know, the day before Thanksgiving uh, 2009, and, and uh, framed on these two, two false charges of domestic abuse, and they take him to the uh, Itasca County uh, Jail at Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And now his, his, his fiancé is totally uh, dependent upon him for for every, you know, uh, every kind of support. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, money, we're talking about food, we're talking about, you know, everything. He's, he's totally, you know, taking care of her there uh, at his home on 40 acres uh, north of Nashua, Minnesota. Uh, and, and the home is, is heated by... Um, uh, uh, by wood, it's it's. Uh, now, do, I, mean, I just have to interject. Did did the judge give a reason why she couldn't testify at all? Or yeah, he said it wasn't relevant. It wasn't relevant. Yep, yep. He 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 excluded all that testimony on the grounds that it was not relevant to whether or not a no contact order was violated. Okay, so it's just on relevance. It wasn't on. He felt like she was persuaded to agree or anything like that. So. Uh, no, uh, he the, the judge. Uh, uh, said that that uh, essentially that whether or not there ever was a real d domestic assault which might justify the no contact order wasn't relevant geez but it could be relevant to someone you know spending you know time in locked up or something so what is happening to this individual um Oh, he's, he's serving five years for, right. for violation of the no contact order. Uh, can I can I get back to the chronology yeah, as to how that yeah. because because we're we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. So anyway, so they pluck him out of his home. They frame him on these two counts of domestic abuse and and take him down to the Itasca County Jail. Now, as I say, his fiance is totally dependent upon him for for everything for for firewood, for heat, and it's November now. I'm in Minnesota and. Uh, for food, for money, um, you name it. Uh, so she's she's really concerned now, and she left. Uh, uh, the record actually shows over a hundred messages a day. I, I, I found that that, that that number phenomenal, but that's what the record reflects. She left uh, over a hundred messages, uh, telephone messages a day for him at at the Itasca County Jail, uh, asking him to call her. And and the the inmates are allowed to to make uh, outgoing calls. They're also allowed to receive recorded messages. Uh, and and like you know, and, and he, she wanted him to call her regarding you know things like money, food, firewood for heat, uh, problem with the septic system, you know household necessities. I mean she was she was stuck in that house up there, uh, in, in in the country with with just you know nothing, um, and. Uh, I uh, was very concerned about that, and, and, and so, you know, like any good man would do, he, he did return her frantic calls, uh, and, and he, he returned them, uh, a number of them. Uh, when he did that, uh, oh, I should mention that after, after he was framed for the domestic uh, assault and he was, he was jailed, uh, the judge put into effect a no-contact order between himself and his fiance, and, and no one had ever asked for that order. The, the, I mean, he and his fiance were on good terms. They weren't fighting. Uh, I mean, they had a little argument, but they, they, they were they were on on good terms. And and she wanted to talk to him, but yet the has judge, this been in the news or the press at all? Uh, it, it was reported in in the Northern Herald newspaper, which I'm I'm the editor of. Uh, Northern Herald newspaper. Uh, I believe it was the the uh, last reporting was the issue of July 12th. 2010, and that's uh, accessible uh, at the site northernherald.com. That's N-O-R-T-H-E-R-N-H-E-R-A-L-D 
uh, dot com. Or the uh, Herald dot com. H e r a l d. Yeah. So like, um, is uh, did you get a lot of you know mail about that uh, you know story or? Uh, we we uh, usually not so much mail, but we've received a number of telephone calls of support. Uh, in fact. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, people um, uh, have even volunteered to to uh, uh, help Mr. Samuelson, you know, with his. Uh, yeah, is he going to get appeal, or is with, that with, what with he's his doing? Costs and, and such of of, of 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 this. Well, we're, we're still we're we're. Let me get back to to the chronology. So, uh, uh, Mr. Samuelson, uh, like I say, uh, this this no contact order was was put in place uh, without the request of of any party. Uh, you know, not not the fiance, not anything. In fact, she tried to to you know have it removed because she wanted to talk to him. Uh, they 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 were they were in good terms. And uh, anyway, so the judge put that no contact order in place. So of course, when Mr. Samuelson did the the same thing that any decent you know man would do, and return her frantic calls for help with the household things, and he returned those calls from the jail. Uh, he found himself charged with 34 counts of violating a no-contact order. Uh, and um, that, that was what he was uh, eventually tried on. Uh, the the uh, uh, Miss Bardeen, uh, Jennifer, um, you know, came to court at a hearing, uh, what they call a, 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 an interlocutory hearing, something, you know, before the actual trial. So there's no jury there. And then she, you know, she testified at that hearing that there was never any um, abuse or assault in the two years that they've been together. Um, and um, so, you know, given that, they eventually dropped the domestic assault charges, but they, they did bring him to trial on violation of the no-contact order, which was based on the phony domestic assault charges. And at that trial, because the, the jury was, was only allowed to hear limited testimony, they, they were not allowed to hear that there never was any domestic assault to justify such an order. They were left with the question uh, of, you know, did the judge put this order in place and, and, and did he make phone calls in violation thereof? Have you, like, tried to contact, you know, I don't know, like the ACLU or other, like, groups like that or uh well no no uh we, we have we haven't contacted the the uh aclu uh, but um because that's excessive 34 things and, and and even to do that so they charged him with that and she is like calling him like a hundred times a day you know uh the whole thing is ridiculous uh, i i think the, the the biggest thing is that that the no contact order itself which was not requested by the fiance. I mean, no one needed protection here. No one asked for protection. And when you 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 say that uh, he can't call her just because there's a phony charge in place, which she had nothing to do with, uh, that's clearly a violation of of the right to free speech uh, and and freedom of association, which uh, is covered by the uh, Ninth Amendment and has been upheld in a number so of cases. So is it possible? Does, does she know the judge, or is there any like you know vindiction here or something, or is it just random uh, insanity? Yeah, it, 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 it's uh, pretty much random insanity. I'm, I'm giving you a lot of uh, uh, legal citations and junk, and in, 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 uh, you know, in speaking about this, I do want to make it clear to everyone that, that I'm uh, I'm I'm not an attorney. I, I make an honest living, uh, but. Uh, Anyway, uh, the uh, uh, the thing of it is that this was uh, clearly a, a, a violation of um, uh, constitutional rights, uh, just even putting the no-contact order in, in, in place. And effectively, he is imprisoned for exercising his freedom of speech. He's, he is imprisoned um, for... For uh, the being call, in the wrong the, place at the wrong time. Well, yeah, you can you can say that that too. Uh, but but our, our constitution is supposed to protect from this sort of. Uh, but yeah, thing. there there shouldn't be wrong places and wrong time in a constitutional republic um, with the rule of law. Um, and uh, so, you know, um, yeah, I mean, maybe you know he could get some legal defense. I mean, hopefully, like a you know a dream team or something. Um, but. Um, I did have a question about that. So, 
Uh, it's, uh, can, can I? Uh, yeah, go uh, ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, well, let, let me, because uh, just the conclusion of the trial, uh, I, I should mention. So, what the upshot of it is, is that uh, not being allowed to hear, you know, all of the evidence and, and being faced with just the question of, you know, was was the order in place and did he make the the phone calls, regardless of the extenuating circumstances, the jury found him guilty of 33 counts of violating a, a uh, no-contact order. Uh, and uh, the jury, of course, uh, is not allowed to know what the potential sentence is for that. That's, that's not something which, is, which can be, they can't, well, be, told, they can't be told to about that. And the judge, in the end, okay. sentenced okay. him to five years in uh, Minnesota State Prison for those uh, violations of the no-contact order. Jeez. He's uh, sitting, he's sitting in, in prison for five years, and contrary to the Minnesota rules of criminal procedure, he was not even given credit for the, uh, for the time served pending trial. He served uh, over uh, a year in, in the Itasca County geez. Jail pending trial, uh, during which time he was not allowed bail. He could have, you know, he had the, the, the means, because he owns property, he had the means to, to post bail. The judge would not set bail, which is uh, also yes. clearly in violation of the United States Constitution. Uh, what, and this is not an isolated case. Uh, what, what we have up here is uh, a situation where if, if, if the law Is there an incentive to do this? That? Is there an incentive to do this built into the system, do you think, or is it just... I, I think the system is self-sustaining. It, 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 it feeds on this. I mean, uh, this, uh, there, there's a tremendous amount of money, you know, involved in, in doing this. And, and I mean, it's not a private prison, is it? It's a uh, no, no. It, it, it's uh, he's in the Minnesota State Prison. Right. But I mean, it's say, you know, you've got uh, you've got prosecutors that are being paid. You've, right. you've got uh, you know the, the whole. You know, uh, there should be any quotas. We definitely need to do something about quotas. Like, I mean, if the crime decreases, that should be considered as like hey you're doing a good job you know not that you have to you know you're slacking off or anything right well uh yes unquestionably uh, so <coughs> as i as i was saying then um you know the, the there's a tremendous amount of money involved here and in, in, in that way there there is an incentive uh and 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 it, it, it would even now we are paying uh, taxpayers are paying uh tens of thousands of dollars a year to improperly keep him in that prison uh, at, at, at Faribault. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, uh, you can see that, that there is a... I mean, you'd almost think that he has a case himself, I mean, um, to sue the, um, you, you know, I guess that courts or something, right? So well, yeah, you can't, you can't sue the judge because of immunity. Um, right. w w once again, uh, the city, uh, when, uh, I, when I talk about these allowing legal, this, yeah, huh? the city maybe, right? Uh, actually, uh, he, he may have cause of action uh, against uh, the, the county and, okay. and against the state, but uh, that cause of action, to the best of my knowledge, would materialize only if this case gets turned around on appeal. Um, and and but but if that happens and if he's been uh, falsely imprisoned uh, for for three years, well, uh, I wonder what the Minnesota you know state Supreme Court would think about this. Hopefully, it doesn't even go that far. It's like hopefully it's the next step. But um, I mean, if this if if the next jury gets to hear this evidence, I'm just curious to see how they would. Um, you, you know how they would come down on that like should they be given a chance so um like i guess they would have to do it in another town or something but um it's they would need to i mean and if he gets found guilty then i guess that's more of a stronger case but if not then you know that's um i mean that sounds only fair and just i i don't see how it wouldn't sound that way the yeah you know, the the theory that that his uh, defense attorney is proceeding on in in appeal and and he also uh, presently uh, has uh, a, a, a petition for writ of habeas corpus uh, that he's bringing before the the uh, federal court which is also stuck in the federal courts the theory uh, is that the no contact order itself was unconstitutional. Uh, and uh, this is um, uh, substantiated right, exactly. by yeah. this is sub substantiated by a, 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 an opinion of a uh, state district court, um, uh, oddly down in Steele County, Minnesota. Uh, uh, the, the, the Kelling case, uh, the, the, the um, 
Coach. Yeah, that sounds like something ripe for turnover. It's probably happened before you're saying the Kelling case has had this. Uh, yes, the judge, uh, the judge in the, the Kelling case, uh, 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 which which is also accessible uh, on the net, um, uh, was was asked to impose uh, such a no contact order, and 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 that Minnesota District Court judge found that that imposing such a thing, which had not been asked for by any party, was was clearly unconstitutional. Uh, and uh, uh, so, as, as a result, uh, in, in that unrelated case, Mr. Kelling did not get a uh, did not get a no contact order issued against him. Uh, but the opinion of the court in that case uh, is uh, one of the uh, considerations uh, in Mr. Samuelson's uh, appeal, because uh, that's what his defense attorneys are maintaining is that 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 no contact order was unconstitutional. Um, but what aggravates uh, what aggravates the Samuelson case uh, is the fact that not only were, were was his right to free speech uh, violated, uh, as well as his, his, his right against false imprisonment, but but all at every right level of the the, the yeah. system, uh, his constitutional rights were trampled. He was he was denied his right to bail. He was denied his right to due process by presentation of evidence. Uh, he was even uh, denied his, his right to uh, uh, counsel, or the appointment of counsel, uh, or, or a competent counsel, because the counsel that they, they uh, appointed initially uh, for him had a conflict of interest. Uh, and uh, so uh, his, his, his U.S. constitutional rights have been trampled all the way down the line, and the result, uh, the, the net result of this is, is we have a situation uh, up here in northern Minnesota where authorities can target a person, and essentially they can throw him in jail and, and throw away the key, uh, and, and he will not have the right have to Have you uh, tried to write to, like, I don't know, I, it might be a long shot, but like Jesse Ventura or someone like that, and see if maybe, uh, yeah, um, have you well written to like some media and stuff? Yeah, maybe see if you can do an interview for your, uh, you, you know, um, you, you know, uh, newspaper and stuff. So. Um. Well, yes, we we we, uh, we have carried the story in in, in the Northern Herald, and we we intend to uh, continue. Uh, to to report the the ongoing story uh, as it develops, uh, but to tie this back, have to, you called your Congress people? I mean, um, who's the incumbent out of the two? Um, uh, the incumbent U.S. congressman? Yeah, uh, that would be Colin Peterson. That's the gentleman. Uh, okay. <clears throat> one of the gentlemen I'm I'm running against to to tie this back to to the campaign. Uh, why this is a focal issue of the campaign? Yeah. Is, is well, you could be on the House floor telling this story on C-SPAN. What's that, sir? You could be on the House floor telling this story on C-SPAN. Uh, the, the, this, this story should be told on the U.S. House floor because uh, it's my uh, opinion that, that if, if Minnesota, if the state of Minnesota cannot uphold the highest law of this country, then, then it, it, it uh, should not be entitled to the benefits of being part of a state of this country. Uh, and and um, you know that's that's the bottom line. Um, uh, justice has to be constitutional in in northern Minnesota. If we cannot uh, incarcerate people and, and prosecute them constitutionally, well, we certainly can't un incarcer incarcerate them unconstitutionally. Well, I mean, and that's just so. I'm sure that um, you would have not have voted for that. National Defense um, Authorization Act the last year, the NDAA, as people are saying, and you probably wouldn't have voted for SOPA and PIPA. Um, is that correct, or am I just? Uh, I, I, I would have to. I, 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 because I was not a congressman at the time. Uh, I uh, it was well. The NDAA says it was not necessary for me yeah. to to uh, thoroughly scrutinize those acts as right you're more involved in the local but, politics but but, but but the thing of it is that I, I i i would i would have to reserve comment on that uh i i would have to 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 tell you how i would have voted i would actually 
have to, you know, thoroughly study those acts as if I was going to vote on them. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, well, I'd ask you to look those up, um, NDAA and, and SOPA, and they're all acronyms, and, uh, and PIPA, P-I-P-A, and um, all for 2012. And, um, uh, but, um, yeah, I understand you're, you're focusing on a, a, an issue locally. Um, you know, I was just saying that if you did get to Congress, you would also be able to bring this issue up. But you'd also, I mean, if you're somebody that is going to bring an issue like this up, I'd imagine that um, this same kind of justice uh, for all our laws is what you'd be considering. Is that true? Uh, you, you can count on me to, to uphold the United States Constitution. The Bill of Rights. In, uh, uh, the, the, the Bill of Rights and the, the entire Constitution uh, yeah, in, the entire in, in, in Constitution. Uh, all ways uh, at, at all times. Um, and, and the, you know, I mean, it's funny how we, we, we name our, our act. Sometimes we end up naming something, you know, the total opposite of what it is. Uh, like you know, the you, take the, you take the Patriot Act. Yeah. Now, now, okay, now, so you are now, aware of that. Great. Great. No, no real patriot would ever countenance that act. Uh, I, I mean to say... Um, the first but, time I heard that phrase, I was like, you know, this is a bunch of BS. Uh, did it blow your mind? It blew my mind. I mean, just right away. As soon as I heard that, I was like, this is anything but. The, 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 this, this is an act which, which, which authorizes... Uh, the government to compromise people's privacy under the Constitution, yeah. and 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 the thing, like I say, it, 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 it's it's amazing the spin. The it, it, it allows the um, uh, officers of of the peace supposedly to to write their own warrants, um, basically without a judge's approval. Um, that's one of the main things, and there's been lots of other things that have been passed that uh, allow indefinite detention and um, not, you know, knowing your, you know, habeas corpus, basically, what you're being charged with and, uh, and um, you know, many, many things, uh, it'd be, you know, not having, you know, due process, basically. We, we, we've got to administer justice by our own constitutional rules. I mean, we wrote the rules. We have to administer uh, justice uh, uh, by those rules. Uh, otherwise, we're no better than, than the people we're prosecuting. Uh, and, and, you know, particularly uh, as concerns the, the right to bail, which was totally trampled on in the Samuelson case, um, uh, the great Justice uh, William Douglas, uh, former Supreme Court, Justice said that 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 when you uh, when you don't give a person right to bail, you're not just you know holding him in in, in jail improperly, but but you're also denying him the opportunity to to participate in his defense, and so it, it's it's a great violation of of due process uh, to uh, you know deny him bail as as was done in, in the Samuelson case, and that, that's just one of the, the many violations that, that happened uh, in, in that case. And that's, you know, that's what this campaign is about. Uh, like I say, we, we do need law enforcement. We need justice. Uh, but, but We should it, promote the good um, law officers because there's plenty of them, and some of them might get overlooked. Um, and uh, we should protect whistleblowers and... Um, uh, or just have ways to, fi you know, file grievances and stuff like that. So, I mean, so it would be an honorable thing to, like, disclose corruption, you, you know, and some, it's, I'm sure it is in most places. And also, you know, I probably shouldn't have been too hard on the uh, two other candidates, but just to let you know who they are. But I honestly have been feeling that these two parties are part of the problem, and um, we need some independence, um, so someone who is going to express their issues the way you are instead of playing politics. And, um, and I mean, you are, the politics shouldn't be a dirty word. I, I mean, basically, you can ignore politics, but politics won't ignore you. And uh, so I, I, I can imagine you um, being there, and, uh, you know, I think it would be a great thing to have, you know, you representing um, parts of the uh, country in the U.S. Congress. I mean, even if I'm not from Minnesota, um, you know. Well, I, I certainly uh, thank you for the compliment. Uh, the, the thing of it is that uh, in line with what you're saying, uh, yeah, we, we have the, the two major parties. Uh, th this case, the Samuelson case, has been publicized. I mean, it, it, it's known. Uh, I don't see anyone from either of the other parties addressing the, this, this massive constitutional uh, violation here in northern Minnesota. And the thing of it is, 
that if if, uh, if it can affect Mr. Samuelson, whose case is not, by the way, unique. I, uh, there are a number of them like it. Uh, well, anything that we allow to happen to others can easily happen to us. It, it's it's um, you know it it's it it can and will be used against all of us, and so everyone needs to know that. And um, so there's no such thing with uh, called justice without equal justice. And isn't that one of the most incredible stories? Unfortunately, is when you hear like people being freed um, from an injustice or or when justice is done in the right way and um, and that's uh, one of the most um, uh, powerful uh, messages that can be uh, you know spread throughout the entire um, you know living population so um, so so you when did you start um, running for Congress sir uh, I think I filed uh, it was uh, back uh, towards the end of June we our, our filing period changed uh, a little bit uh, here in Minnesota, and, 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 and it seems like it was uh, the, the end of June that I filed. Great, great. And um, so you're the, the 7th District, I mean, that's, um, you know, that, that would be to the U.S. House, and you don't have any other third-party candidates, and this is a year where, you know, Congress does have a 9% disapproval rating. Would it um, be a, a practical... Uh, expression of um, to have someone represent us that isn't just going to play politics that's you know going to seek after the truth going to have some principles and, uh, and and actually represent people I mean I, I don't understand why you know there isn't you know more turnover but uh, but maybe this year maybe people just have to you know get a little mad enough and this is a way to do it instead of revolting in the streets and stuff like that this is the way to do it. Local elections changing the House. I mean, the presidential one, that's a big one. And, you know, I hope, um, you know, it's uh, that that works out good. But we can all, you know, um, get really involved. It's a lot easier. It's not so overwhelming in like a local election, like a seventh district. And I don't see anything wrong with uh, electing you at, at, at all. Um, I think uh, you'd do a better job than the other two, and I think you'd bring up issues that we need to hear. And um, and isn't that, you know, when people s stand up for, like, the Star Spangled Banner and stuff, I mean, isn't this the kind of story that they're, uh, you know, standing up for? Uh, ab absolutely. Uh, uh, but the, the thing of it is that we, we need to do it. We need to stand up not just in name only. We, we, we don't just need to, to, to look at the flag and pledge allegiance to it. Right. Uh, well, I do support doing that, mind you. I'm, I'm all, all, all in favor of the Pledge of, of Allegiance, and I think under God, and there's a phrase in it, is just fine. Uh, but uh, the thing of it is we need, we need to do it more uh, than, than uh, just uh, in, in words. We need to take action to be sure that, that the highest law of our land is, is upheld uh, here in, in northern Minnesota and, and everywhere else. Okay. Um, well, I and so I mean, you're going to you're an accountant too, so I'm sure you're not going to like uh, be like a big spender or anything either. Um, and uh, and you're definitely a civil libertarian. Um, so I think people from all walks of life, whether you're progressive, libertarian, whatever, conservative, liberal, um, can get behind this. Um, I mean, I hope they do. Uh, and the, the thing of it is that that, that uh, as far as uh, spending and tax goes, you know, it, it, it's not the focal issue of the campaign. But you know, just for, for the record, I do those people's taxes, and 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 I know, you know, how much people are being taxed uh, for, uh, you know, government spending. Uh, and and uh, I, I believe in less taxing and less spending. I mean, there, there are things that we need for our national defense. We need our roads, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, uh, aside from, you know, the things that, that are necessary, uh, we, we have no business taxing and spending. I mean, it's like uh, Senator Everett, uh, former Senator Everett, Everett Dirksen said a few years ago. He said, uh, you know, you, you take a few billion here, you spend a few billion there before long, you're talking about real money. Yeah, it's and, and you know what? It, it, it has a dual thing to it because it wastes money. and But it's also the stuff that we're spending it on 
isn't positive. It's not like we're spending it on solar panels or we're spending it on exploring space. No, instead, we're just spending it on blowing stuff up so we can, you know, use other tax dollars to build it um, and giving no-bid contracts to private corporations while, you know, just the mom-and-pop shops, the small and mid-sized businesses, um, they're paying their own competitors. I mean, that's a shame. And uh, That's absolutely true. Yeah. What, 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 what you're saying is, is, is absolutely true. Yeah, we could have a higher technological military and um, probably go back down to like, you know, 2005 levels or something like that and, and still be, you know, have the biggest military than the next like 25 countries or something like that. But uh, and, and, you know, maybe outer space, you know, there's some place for that. Um, do you have any opinions on um, uh, did you, what about NASA? Do you? Well, the, the thing of it is that, that you know, it, it's, uh, it's getting hard to find a, a, a good uh, vacation spot, you know, uh, places like, like um, you know, the, the, the usual places people go, like, like um, Puerto Vallarta and like that are getting more crowded. It would be nice to be able to take a vacation on the moon. Uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, I'm, I'm jesting, of course, but uh, uh, as far as, uh, you know. Well, there uh, are people like the, you know, some of the chiefs of uh Google and um, I think PayPal, Virgin, they're all planning this stuff out. Well, yes, they, they, they are. I understand that there was some company that was actually selling, uh, a, you know, a, pri a private company that was, was selling the opportunity for, for people to go into space. I, I don't know how that's going to pan well, out. People uh, under tourism is a huge industry. I mean, think tourism is a huge industry. And I think we've lost a lot of that since, um, the, you know, the policies after the Patriot Act. And, uh, and, and I think people discount um, civil liberties, how that can affect the economy. Um, I think it's all one issue. And, um, I'd, you know, people's vibes and, and their attitudes, I mean, I'm sure probably play a big part. Um, because if they're focusing on other things that are distracting them, that's taken away from time, for, away from positive endeavors. Yeah, that's a very good uh, point. Uh, uh, the, the, as far as, you know, stuff like space exploration uh, and, and like that, that goes, uh, I'm in favor of it, uh, you know, within reasonable parameters. Um, I, 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 I don't think we should uh, spend phenomenal uh, sums uh, on that to the you know well, de detriment of the taxpayers. But I, I, I do support space exploration. I, I, I think uh, we, we need to continue to to explore that that frontier. Um, and and there there are uh, you know many other. Uh, functions of government that their national defense is very important to us and we we, we you know uh, we, we do need to uh, uh, have a strong national defense however uh, you know the, the things like the Halliburton scandal uh, and, and and like that that that's what's not needed that billions that's of dollars and and they built stuff that like broke I mean they weren't even good at building like the stuff that they were paid to build and, and then they charge like you know an ex extraordinary amount for like you know food and stuff like that I we, think. we 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 need to uh, the taxpayers should not you know be, be paying for these phenomenal wastes and I will say this that that uh, I intend you know to read anything if I if elected I, I, I intend to read anything that I sign and by God Absolutely. if it's written in such language that I don't understand it I'm not going to sign it yeah I mean if someone who's representing me like think about your lawyer think about that person um, uh, Steve Samuelson that we were talking about think about if you know he's in a court case of his life and think about if his lawyer didn't read nothing all right now think about this your representative in Congress they don't need to be a lawyer I mean they should be teachers you know everything uh, CPAs I mean and uh, so it's I mean they don't care enough I mean and this affects us like even probably more because we're going to war we're going to war without even declaring it and um and so if, if that's not a matter of life and death people like on you know multiple tours like uh five plus tours and stuff like that um i mean our army needs to regroup um and uh all the services but they just need to heal for a while and 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 i probably wouldn't take too long but just sometimes you just have to you know kind of you know, kind of patch things up for a while, and um, and plus, you know, we probably could be trading with a lot of these countries. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these countries, like 
um, right after 9-11, Iran offered all its services to us, and we ignored them. And um, so it's it, we could be making money off these countries or making money with them by trading with them, and then they, there'd be less incentives to fight and stuff like that, possibly. Maybe I'm just too optimistic. What do you think? Well, you've, you've touched on an awful lot of issues there, sir, but uh, basically uh, uh, the, the, these are all... Uh, interesting points uh, as far as as uh, what we're doing uh, militarily uh, overseas goes, uh, and, and and particularly as you, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, as regards to the people doing these multiple tours of duty over there, uh, I, I I have to say that I'm I'm very proud of our military. Uh, we have great soldiers, uh, great people who uh, you know. Uh, willing to put their lives on the line to defend uh, American liberty, and that's a great thing. And I know, I actually personally know uh, heroes uh, from, from uh, you know, Iraq and uh, Afghanistan, and, and it's a wonderful thing they're doing over there. Uh, I, I want to stress, however, that, that the people who, who joined the National Guard never envisioned them themselves right. going overseas, uh, calling up the, the National Guard. Uh, for that uh, was very unusual by uh, uh, Mr. Bush. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the thing of it is that I, I, I do think when someone uh, signs up uh, for, for a hitch in, in the U.S. military... I mean, he was in the National Guard, too, wasn't he? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think so. I, 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 I believe he, he was, but there, there's, Luckily, they there's were some controversy that over. surrounds... Yeah. But anyways. There's so some controversy that surrounds his actual service, and so, but you know, that's that's off the topic. Uh, I don't, I'm not that concerned about you know right. where, where Mr. Bush served. Uh, the my my point is that that generally the the National Guard is is, is you know not supposed to be sent outside our shores. Uh, they they are the National Guard. They are here to protect our nation, uh, and and if if they're going to be sent overseas. But that's the point I was making because. Because yeah, if if he you know if he was in the National Guard, he didn't have to go over being in the National Guard. But he's making the National Guard go over now. I, I think I, I think it's wonderful that we we have so many dedicated members of the National Guard and the other uh, branches of the service that were willing to do this. I yeah. I, I, I do believe though if, if if they're going to be subject to overseas service, that has to be very very clear when they sign up. Uh, and uh, we, we, we can't just, you well, know. I think there's no doubt that, you know, some of our best ambassadors weren't the people in the State Department. They were um, the military soldiers that, uh, you, you know, um, swore an oath for, to our Constitution and, and represent us. And uh, I, I definitely think that without a doubt, some of our best ambassadors have been, uh, you know, the soldiers and the troops. And um, our fine soldiers have, have done a wonderful job over there, and they've not only uh, done a wonderful job militarily, but also uh, diplomatically. Uh, yep. You know, uh, in, in their presentation of, of, of what the the U.S. Uh, was uh, uh, and what the U.S. president, what the U.S. presence meant over there, and and in this, you know. Uh, uh, George uh, Bush uh, spoke. Uh, uh, yeah, George W. Bush uh, spoke of, of winning the hearts and the minds of the people over there, and and our, our, our military have been fabulous ambassadors uh, in that in that realm. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many things. Even if you were against the Iraq parts, I mean, if you were to argue for it, I mean, the, they they made like I'm not a military historian, but I would think like one thing that they totally messed up on was if they were going to do it. Just being plain devil's advocate here, um, you know, they should have guarded all the borders. What they should have done is use like uh, NATO and, and, and strictly just use them to guard the borders, um, and then it just left the, the inside to the U.S. And, and let us take care of that. So, that, so but that you know, but that's just uh, in hindsight and stuff like that. And um, but um, well, any other issues uh, that I haven't. Uh, you, you know, brought up or that you think is important um, in 2012, on November 6, 2012. And before I get to that, actually, in closing, um, how, you know, people need to contact you, right? Um, and so they can, um, let's see, they can, 
send donations to your address here, the P.O. Box 1132? Uh, yes, they can, they can. If there's anyone that, out there who has, uh, a, a, you know, a tremendous amount of money that they don't have any good use for, uh, you know, we could use it for the campaign. Yeah, well, I think uh, investing in the country, um, I, it's, you, you know, is, is a definitely a good re reason. Um, I think sending a, you know, a sincere, serious candidate as yourself um, to represent, I, I don't, to me, that doesn't sound far fetched whatsoever, um, but it's P.O. Box 1132 or 1132 Bemidji, B E M I D J I, Minnesota 56619. And you can say it too if you want. Um, I'm not sure if I pronounced the city correct. Yes, you, you, you pronounced it exactly uh, correctly. It's uh, Post Office Box uh, 1132. Uh, Bemidji, um, uh, B E M I D J I, Minnesota 56619, um, and and that would be uh, uh, to Adam Steele, our candidate for um, uh, Congress. Uh, and uh, the thing of it is, uh, though, that, that I, I'm uh, you know not not really soliciting contributions. Uh, this is uh, th this is a, a, a low budget campaign. Uh, it, it's based mostly. Well, it didn't have to be just contributions. People could put up signs for you. Um, they could invite you on to um, public access television, or even like your other newspapers could do that. Um, the local news media could contact you. You could have um, meetups. Like, um, you should start a meetup.com. Have you ever looked at meetup.com and start a meetup um, called, like, uh, the Constitution Meetup or something like that, or the Independence Meetup uh, 2012 or something like that, maybe? Yeah, the, the, those are all good ideas. Uh, as I say, this, this campaign is, is, is uh, mostly uh, based on on the issues. That's that's yeah, really people what, could go what, door to door for you, or what's that, call. sir? People could go door to door for you and call. They could get involved. It doesn't have to be money, right? It could be time as if, well. So, yeah, if someone wants to help, uh, you know, we we, we, we certainly uh, won't turn it down. Uh, the 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 uh, important thing is is to uh, bring. Uh, constitutional justice to to northern Minnesota. So you have flyers, like I see your flyer here. Are you, are you printing some out and passing them around? Or? Uh, I'm I'm going to do that uh, later in the campaign. Uh, the the thing of it is that uh, you know I, I at the library, the post office, like other organizations, churches, um, you know, groups, meetup groups, and yeah. Yep, it's it's available now on online, and I'll I'll probably make some print copies of it. And it's a very good flyer too. Um, it's very well detailed and and, and made. Um, it's uh, let's see. Uh, well, the thing the thing of it is that it, it's you know, it, it it's I guess direct and to the point that this this campaign is 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 based on one thing, and that that's the the atrocity. That a person can can be plucked up out of his home, thrown in jail, and denied all of his constitutional rights. I mean, they're, they're treating Mr. Samuelson the way we, we treated the suspected. You know, you hear stories like Guantanamo. that on television. What's I mean, that? over this last year, I've heard tons of stories like this. I heard about an Amish um, group that were selling raw milk, and they got raided by like a like a raid team or something. You know, and I heard. I can believe that. I, I mean, that's insane. I mean, they're selling raw milk to people who know it's raw milk and, and, and want it's raw milk. It was Amish people selling raw milk. And then Gibson Guitars got raided. Um, that was in Tennessee. I mean, um, I mean, there's been so many stories, like a, a kid being taken away because of the Patriot Act and, and from his parents and, you, you know, other adolescents being um, sent to juvenile crimes because they're being paid off by a judge. Um, it was a, like, I think a private priv prison system. Um, you hear about, uh, you know, farmers being sued by like big industrial farmers, um, you know, for ridiculous reasons that uh, they claim that, um, you know, some of their genetically modified um, uh, corn crops were spread into their farms, and then they're saying they're using that without, you know, because it's patented. You're it's, talking about the Monsanto issue. Yeah, I'm talking about that. I mean, uh, that, 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 that is outrageous. Yeah, I mean, there's like, there's, I mean, that's why there's an ACLU and, and, and other or groups like that in every um, city, because we need stuff like that, you know, and uh, so 
the more that we can push forward on this, um, the more, I mean, isn't that what is respectful and dignified? Isn't that something you can be proud of? Like if you're at a place that upholds justice. And I think that shows true strength in every stretch of the imagination. It makes you proud to be an American, but uh, the, the uh, problem is that, that we have suffered over the years. That's the answer to all of this uh, junk that we're having right now. I mean, um, the depression or recession, whatever you want to call it, and, and, and all these things is just getting back to these I think um, almost moral roots but also like in a kind of a law kind of way you know just respecting people's rights um, and their civil rights and uh, liberties um, and, uh, and then, absolutely yeah that, that could be the big you know that could and then have all the laws built off that and uh, that's where everything should base out of and 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 you know what um, if it ends up being like that, I, I would rather be in a place like that than, than something that is, you know, just uh, in the short term efficient or expedient, but that's going to trample on all our rights. And, and in the long run, this is a more solid foundation that's get built to last, you know. And uh, Absolutely. Yeah, it might take a little slower to get going, but once it gets going, it's just, you know, it, it's, it ex exponentially builds up speed where the other one just withers away um, like a plant growing in a crack of a sidewalk or something you know and the other ones in nice fertile soil um, so uh, it, it, well um so I think, I, I mean, I feel enthused about this, and uh, I think there's um, a purpose to this. And I think, um, you know, if people can't get behind this, I, I don't know what's wrong with them, you know. Um, maybe they need to visit the Wizard of Oz and get a heart or something, or and maybe some brains and courage, uh, too. Well, hopefully enough people will, will get behind it that they'll remember to go out and, and, and vote on Election Day. That's that's the important thing. And November 6th, um, that's it. I mean, there's yep. still some time, and right now it's uh, the end of June. It's almost July. So, um, well, uh, it, it's been a pleasure. Um, and, uh, yeah, Adam Steele for uh, candidate for U.S. Congress, 7th Congressional District of Minnesota. Um, I'll say goodbye to you after this interview, but uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, it's most assuredly a pleasure, and I thank you all much for your time, and I thank your audience. Excellent. Thanks.